Thank you very much. So I'll introduce myself properly at the moment and tell you who I am and everything, but I just need to warm you up first, because I'm full. That's a lovely, lovely, lovely meal. Thank you very much, lovely meal people. <laughs> well, I'm very, very, very grateful to be here, thank you. Uh, you will understand why I'm grateful at the moment and bring out the slide Who saw the uh, word uh, PowerPoint presentation and thought, oh shit? <laughs> So I've been, told, I've been told not to swear, I will try very hard not to. I've been told not to drop my trousers, I will try very hard not to. Mandy says when I said I won't wear a kilt was a picture. Woo! Oh, yes. um, so let's just warm you up a little bit. Can you all raise your right hand if you're able? And wiggle your hand like this. And then just gently bring it down to the lap of the person on the right hand side. <laughs> So you're getting to know each other, that's the... So, uh, so I'm Martin Cooper, and I'm delighted to be here supporting one of my favourite charities, the Caps Protection League. And, uh, but my cancer, my choices. Uh, and I'm going to tell you the story about how I got involved with them, and why I'm here tonight uh, talking to you, which like I say, I'm delighted to be doing. So behind me, you can see a wonderful picture of a very gorgeous looking boy. I'm going to keep using the word gorgeous, it's important as part of this story I'm going to tell you. So, I was, I was very lucky, I was in a warm, loving family. Um, my mum lost her first child, as I said, and I was a golden child. I was pampered, I was spoiled, and I looked like that, I mean, that looked. <laughs> my mum was a model, and uh, the reason I've got this picture with my details here is because she got me into modelling. I was a child model. So for all of you that were reading the, um, the little words catalogue and looking at the boys in under their page, that was me. <laughs> I've still got it. <laughs> keep your trousers on, keep your trousers on. Um, so the next slide, thank you, I'll go in front of the board. This is the other side, but my hand doesn't work. We'll come on to that in a minute. Uh, the next slide. Sorry, no. I'll say one of <laughs> Look at me! I'm 20! I'm about 21, 22 there, and boy god, I've still got it! I can turn for that! Some people did! So I just started on my nursing career. I was going to go to, um, I was going to go off and be an actor. Um, but uh, I needed to get out of the house. My parents were driving me insane. God knows what I was doing to them. But uh, I needed to get out of the house. There was a room available at a hospital near uh, Henley on Thames, uh, which had just opened for autistic children. And I went there to the room. Nothing altruistic or vocational about it. I needed to get out of the house. Went there, worked with these kids. It was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. Um, and of course I was out of the house. Uh, some lads came down from the big hospital to fix things, there was some problem, and uh, oh, I got the smoke blown up my ass so hard it was coming out of my ears. You're a wonderful nurse, you're great with these kids, what a wonderful nurse you are. Um, I was terrible, to be honest, but they needed a second row for the hospital rugby team, so they forced me to go and do my nurse training. There is the hospital rugby team. Uh, I'm the one in the green because I was a wimp and it was cold. <laughs> I was never very good at rugby. So that's the very cool rugby team. Uh, do you recognise this person? Yeah. yeah, yeah. J.P.R. Williams. Yeah. Uh, he, he was um, a, a surgeon in uh, the Blanchier area. He came to play with us a few And people say, people say, what was it like playing with one of the greatest rugby players of all time? And I would say, I think he enjoyed it. <laughs> but the uh, lecture is not only was I pretty, I was hench. And uh, go to the next one. At 55, at 55, I was still hench in my opinion. <laughs> there is muscle tone. There's a bloody dark smile on his face because he's naked again. Um, 
So I carried this sense of gorgeousness from being a child right through to being about 55. Um, and it's, 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 not a vain, it's not a vanity thing. I just knew inside that I was okay. I, I was all right. Well, next slide. Oh, ah, there we go. It all starts going wrong at 55. That's the inside of my head. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with uh, CT, so this was a CT rather than an MRI. Uh, they did the cheap ones first. <laughs> this is an unwelcome visitor. As we later found out, that is a raptorius meningioma. A rare but aggressive variant. Lovely words to read, I have to say. Um, that's not the problem. I mean, it is the problem, it's the cause of the problem. But if you look here, I don't know how we'll probably find this is from but what that's doing is that's taking up a considerable amount, uh, amount of my brain space. And it's causing problems for the rest of my brain. So it started off with me starting to walk a little bit like Eeyore, you know, dragging my foot together. <laughs> And it got to the point where, it, looking back, I mean, there were loads of headaches and signs that things weren't well, but you don't think I've got a brain issue, but you just think, oh, I must have drunk too much last night. But uh, I'm, I'm a guitarist, and I couldn't move my left hand to do what I wanted it to do. And I thought, okay, pinch I may be, but I haven't looked after myself, I've probably had a stroke. So I went to see my GP, and within one hour, of seeing my GP, I've been sent to the hospital and had that CT scan. I was very poorly, but I didn't know it at the time. And the next picture. So, I was gorgeous. <laughs> and then I got brain cancer. And then I looked like that. Now, I'm happy to share this photograph because I kind of wanted to talk to you that you know, everyone knows that cancer is horrible. Um, if anyone disagrees, do shout out. Everyone knows that cancer is horrible. And there's a different side to it. So it's what it does to your body. And it's what it does to your brain if you've got brain cancer. But it's also what it does to about how you feel about yourself. But at this particular point, I didn't feel gorgeous. So you can see that it hadn't damaged my brain that much. <laughs> because I'm not gorgeous. But I was poor. And I felt horrible, um, physically, but also mentally. I, I just felt awful about myself. I lost all my confidence. Um, generally, just didn't have much of an opinion. Lost my self-regard. Um, also, I don't know what the next slide is, but let's look at it. So, also as well as that going on, I also sort of woke up after my surgery and everything, and I've got disabilities. Um, so I became a triplegic. My left side didn't work, like I've had a stroke, and because of um, my positioning on the table, my right arm didn't work. I've got no fine motor skills in my right arm, I'm right-handed. Um, so there were physical issues, but there was also this dreadful sense of not liking who I was, didn't know who I was, and this was all on top of trying to learn to walk, to talk properly, to eat without choking. My biggest aim in life at that particular time was to stand up to pee, because that's what men do, and I've lost my sense of manhood. Um, I've given up on that, by the way, now when we sit down to pee, it's much easier to check. <laughs> okay, so I still stand up to pee when I do it accidentally. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen this evening. <laughs> um, I lost all track of that. <laughs> so these are, my, uh, these are my two kids. They were very young at this time. They were sort of um, uh, seven and eight when I became ill. They have coped admirably with everything. Um, but there's a sense as a man that you are failing because you can't do what you used to do. I was unable to work. My job was a nurse. Um, however, in my spare time, if we have the next man, in my spare time, I 
was a clown and a musician. So this picture is taken since my brain surgery. So I've been out on the street working. I don't do kids' parties, by the way, so don't come and ask me. <laughs> Bloody ain't <ain't> kids. <laughs> kids' parties. I used to have to wear a box when I did do them. But, um, because <laughs> they kind of hit but I know. Which might have been the cause of my second cancer, the prostate cancer. <laughs> Look, thank you. There's an advert on the telly at the moment for a cancer reserve and saying, uh, um, one in two people will get cancer in their lifetime. Well, some of us are more bloody greedy than that, to be quite honest. <laughs> Once you've had one, you can't wait for the next, it's so Can't wait to see what the third one will be. So I've been out clowning, um, and I've had to adapt because obviously I, I can't be the physical clown I was. I was very big and it was quite funny me falling over a lot. Uh, now it's quite sad when I fall over a lot because I don't mean to do it. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, I'm rattling through. This is great, isn't it? I don't know what we've done. I don't know what the contractual obligation was, but we've done well before then. <laughs> So I'm still working as a musician. This was earlier this year. This is my friend Simon. He's a very good bass player. Uh, are you recording this so I can show it? Keep him on my side, okay? Uh, this was us at Winchester playing at a little festival. Uh, God knows what we're playing, but I looked to be enjoying myself hugely. Uh, and the next time we do it. So this is getting us back to my cancer, my choices. Uh, and if I can do a little Bob Gale little impression for you, give us your pocket money. <laughs> <laughs> they, they invited me, I'm sorry, I swore twice now. Your <laughs> trousers are still on, just saying. I'm doing all right. These are my fellow fashion models um, at the My Case and My Choices fashion show, which I think was in September. Yeah, in September. So, there. I'm back to thinking I'm gorgeous again. That's what the fashion show did for me. The fashion show gave me an opportunity to think I was gorgeous again. It did the same for every single one of the models up there. Before I came here this afternoon, I went to see them. They were having a little gathering uh, before I came here. And it was so, and all of them blossomed during the show. All of us have lost our confidence. All of us have lost our ability to like ourselves, to love ourselves a little bit, because of the cancer. It doesn't just affect your body, it affects how you feel about yourself. Um, I checked with the girls whether it was okay to say this, so I'm going to say this. This is Margaret. She's very poorly at the moment. Very poorly. As, um, as she says, not very long left. Um, this is Lisa. This was in September when these photographs were taken. This is Lisa. She has no time left. She died um, about a month or so ago. Cancer is a bastard. Fuck cancer. Fuck cancer. <laughs> cancer doesn't necessarily stop you doing what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so this is. This is during the fashion show. But obviously for some of you, my legs are the centre of attraction here. During my uh, wardrobe accident. Um, what I want to point out though is not my legs, I want to point out Mandy's face. <laughs> at, this, at this particular point, Mandy is unaware that I've done this on purpose. <laughs> Mandy thinks I'm in trouble. <laughs> Mandy's horrified at coming to help me. I think it's the funniest photo I've ever seen in my life. So thank you, Mandy, for trying to say that. I met this 
beautiful Kiwi woman. And um, we got married in September. So to finish, I'm just going to scare Mandy.